there and welcome back to the Nonprofit Show. Thrilled to have you here with us today. Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy, is our guest today. So as you know, if you've joined us before, we like to turn the seats on one another. So Julie is here to talk about what corporate partners really want and what you should consider when it comes to selling event sponsorships. But before we jump into this, we want to remind you who we are again. You just heard Julia is our guest, Julia C. Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. And I'm Jarrett Ransom, nonprofit nerd and CEO of The Raven Group. We are so very honored to have the ongoing support from these amazing presenting sponsors. So shout out of immense gratitude goes over to our besties at Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraising Academy at National University, 180 Management Group, your part-time controller, Staffing Boutique, JMT Consulting, Nonprofit Nerd, as well as Nonprofit Tech Talk. Again, thank you to these companies that allow us these conversations. And if you missed any of our previous episodes, we are now over a thousand episodes and you can find them right here. So go ahead and scan that QR code on the screen, download the app, and you can find us also on your broadcast and your podcast platforms. So Julia, we are jumping right into this. Uh, and our, our first topic, you know, as we look at this is really the secret. What is this all about when it comes to selling corporate partners? Because um, you have here, it's really not all about the event. So what is it about? You know, it's so interesting, Jarrett. Um, everybody's getting ready to get their corporate sponsorships nailed down for busy summer, even going into the fall. And a lot of people think, oh, it's about the event, but it's not really. Corporate mm -hmm. sponsors are going to have a minimal impact if there's a ballroom of 500, maybe if they're lucky, a thousand people. That would be a big event for a lot of organizations. Yeah. A lot of communities can't even hold that many people. So the event is not really what it's about. It's about all the other things that go on. And so you've got to think about the event is one part on the dial, but it's really an entire ecosystem. And so we're going to be talking about that because it's really a different way to think about it. But this is the way that your corporate sponsors are thinking about it. Yeah. And, and they're also looking at the long-term value. So not just that event, the long-term value and that community connectivity. Talk mm -hmm. to us about that. So a lot of times they want to be associated with a cause or a mission or a concept. So let's say you're a healthcare organization. You might want to really be associated with issues around wellness or science or discovery or care. Right. And so these are the things that that an organization can attach themselves to and really be perceived more as a community partner is having goodwill. Most of the time, these decisions are made by the marketing departments. Right. Because for the most part, corporate sponsorships come out of budgeting uh, line items for marketing. Right. We think, oh, it's philanthropic, but that's not really the case. It has to to really be filtered through that lens of marketing. And so how you're being associated with something is really, really important. And I'll tell you, it's a dicey thing because let's go to the other extreme and let's talk about domestic violence. There are a lot of organizations that don't even want to be associated with it. They might be like, oh my gosh, it's really important. And we believe that this is a scourge but they don't necessarily want to have their logos associated with it. It's kind of heartbreaking, but tougher topics. I've, yeah. Tougher yeah, topics. I've are hard to sell. I've never heard. Yeah. I've never heard yeah. that. You know, it's funny that you say about the marketing, um, as you know, so my brother does fundraising for a university and I was talking to him about an event that I was helping one of my clients with. And I said, oh, so-and-so company is a sponsor. And he said, a sponsor or an advertiser, right? Because yeah. <laughs> it really does come to, are there dollars being used for marketing? Like they want to have their logo and their product in the room of these potential consumers. Yeah. And, and so your topic here really aligns with that that question, because 
Sometimes it is advertising, you know, when it comes to that, that product placement or the logo placement, um, but not always. Right. So, so let's move into the media partners because there's a lot of partnerships and media is one of them. What are we looking for when it comes to exposure with our confirmed media partners? And and on this image, you have a beautiful camera and a camera woman. Um, so yeah, what does this look like? So Jared, I think this is the starting point. If you are working on an event, that then you're going to go back out um, and sell sponsorships. And yes, I think your brother's right. It is advertising. Uh, <laughs> I think that this is where you start because most decisions are going to be made on who else is coming to the party, so to speak, in terms of where are we going to get added exposure, right? Where are we going to see our logo and even our people represented? And so if you can come to the table and say, well, we have XYZ newspaper and they're going to run so many ads and we have XYZ radio station and they're going to do a live remote and we have XYZ Uh, TV station, they're going to broadcast post coverage or be their day of. I mean, there are a lot of different traditional broadcast media outlets, but you want to break it down into three places. You want to do print, you want to do broadcast, which we call TV, and then you want to do radio because generally you won't get more than one per segment. So It'll be really hard to get more than one newspaper or more than one magazine or more than one radio station for the most part, right? So you've got to kind of pick your battles and figure out where you're going to get all these pieces to fit in. And then when you go to prospective sponsors, it's a much easier sale because you can say, look, this is what our media campaign looks like. And here's the here's another secret, Jared. It's pre-coverage, it's event coverage, and it's post-coverage. So it's it's three avenues in to promoting your event. Right. So you mentioned print, TV, broadcast, Mm -hmm. as well as radio. And I'm really curious, where does new media fall into this? Social media, influencers, Mm -hmm. um, like where does that fit into the current trends? You know, it, it that's going to be something that is more driven internally, right? Because you'll be able to push out. It's really hard to go in front of, let's say, YouTube or Google or Facebook and get them to pull in and make a commitment on something so broad. So you're going to have to to drive that that bus yourself, which most nonprofits already are, and so they'll understand that. And we can, that's a whole nother discussion because what that does. That means that you're going to have to create some uh, some artwork and and some pieces so that those things can be posted by potential sponsors because you want them sharing the news as well. But I think for the most part, that, as I said, is an internal thing. Now, when you get these other media partners, you have to to give over control. Right. I mean, they can talk to you about what they're going to do and what their plan is and what they what they've boarded up um, in terms of placement. But if there's breaking news, you know, all bets are off and you might, you might lose that opportunity. You don't ever know. You just don't ever know. know. So it's about control at that point. We have a a question and I want to ask it, but Julie, I'm curious if it might be um, more appropriate later. So I'm going to share the question with you and you can decide what advice would you give to building and growing a sponsor relationship beyond that event sponsorship? Love this so that's- question. Whoever you are, maybe I know you, maybe I don't. I don't. Uh, yay, team. It's anonymous, this- sadly. <laughs> anonymous. Oh my gosh. Well, you know what? This is the this is the secret sauce to the whole thing. And remember the first slide we talked about. It's not just one thing, right? It is it's an it's a compliment. And if you think about all the things going on, 1.8 million nonprofits, you know, I, I call it a 25-8 media, you know, climate, right? It it's just so much is going on. If you can go to these partners and navigate a path for them 
that's ideal, right? They don't want to have to be recreating what their partnerships are every year, every month, every week. So if you can align with them and march in the same direction, you're going to have a lot more opportunity, a lot more opportunity. So yeah, this is also, it, it makes it incumbent upon the nonprofit to think out and I yeah. gulp 18 to 24 months on their events, yeah. not just 12 months. Right. You got to be thinking out because this is the way that marketing piece goes for the, in the for-profit world. Yeah. Yeah. And I coach the clients and nonprofits that I work with. You want to talk to your sponsors on an annual basis. So you're not just going to them for every single event right. or no. every single opportunity. You're no. going to them with an a la carte menu. Here's what a $50,000 uh, partnership would look like. Right. And they get to choose. Yes. I want to be a signature sponsor of this event. Mm -hmm. I want to be a program sponsor of this event. Mm -hmm. And that way they're shopping with their philanthropic dollars throughout the year. So I, I hope that adds uh, some extra value to the question because it is a really good question. <laughs> it is. And it, it's, it's, uh, it's a question that when you understand it, it actually builds more opportunity. Yeah, it does. Deeper okay, up. well, let's move into logo placements, mm -hmm. marketing, and hyperlinked. Because mm -hmm. I think this also dovetails nicely into this annual par partnership. Mm -hmm. Most of these, you know, galas, I'll say they have a gala page, a gala website, that's where exactly. you register. And that's where the logo placements and marketing is. But what happens, Julia, is after the event, that's gone. It's, right. it's, it's deleted. So talk to us about the best practices for this. So this is one of those things where it should be in what we call on a website in the folio. The folio means it's the bottom part. And it should not just be on the event landing page. Indeed, put it on the event landing page. But I think it's really important to also have a tab on every website that lists supporters of your of your mission, right? Because that is a really important part of the continuation of a relationship. And it also brings some connectivity to other people that might be looking to invest with you, maybe yeah. go on your board, maybe even seek services from your organization. So don't let those go. And for those organizations who think, okay, the event's over, get that page down, uh-uh. It needs to go on an events page where it's archived. Look at the great time we had, look at the images. Don't just take that page down. You wanna navigate it to a place where you can celebrate what occurred. And also communicate about how your organization does something, right? You know, yeah. who was there? What did it look like? Those are the things I think that are really important to keep those relationships strong and to also communicate more about your organization. So really, really important. You're mentioning, you know, the halo low effect. And I remember learning that early in my career where, you know, other supporters, companies, they want to know who else has already committed to this event because they want to be in the room or associated with or on the same platform, you know, with a lot of the same uh, supporters and community champions. So I always think of that halo effect. And it is nice when, when you say, here's who's already, you know, committed for these opportunities. Right. And here's who's yeah. marched with us. I think that's the right. thing, you know, who, who has been with us and things change, you know, maybe they were with you for, you know, your community breakfast in the fall, but they're not going to be with you with your spring luncheon or, you know, whatever. But I think also this goes a long way, Jarrett, for when you do have those dips in relationships that you can be like, hey, we never gave up on you. We never erased you. We we always, you know, demonstrated to our community that you were a valuable partner. And so I think yeah. that this is just a good piece of stewardship. I really do. It's it's pretty yeah. basic. So well, and I love going back to see photos of past events and, and see what the event will look like. As as a female, I like to see what is the dress code, right? Like mm. what is the best dress and those kind of, you know, ideas that you can you can glean. Right. Okay, take us to stage time. How might we use the introductions as part of our branding? 
This is a strategy that I, I, I'm really curious to hear more. This is a very interesting thing. And I'm on a couple boards where we've started doing this. I've been witnessing it and it is um, really interesting because what it does is let's say you have um, a utility, right? Um, a, a, A regional utility, very large organization. And let's say you're going to do something along the lines of a conversation on DEI. You can have that organization's champion of DEI or maybe their executive vice president of DEI, whatever they have, come and make an introduction to your speaker, right? Or introduce some part of it so that they get FaceTime. Um, This is a really interesting way of getting somebody on the stage without getting them on the stage, right? So it's basically, in many ways, a three-minute commitment, right? Mm -hmm. But if you think about an event, that person's name goes up on the screen behind you. They're on the program. They might be videotaped. They might be interviewed by another media company. Um, our media partner, and it just helps bring together more voices in the room. And corporate sponsors love this because it's giving them FaceTime, if you will. Um, They don't have to prepare a big speech. They don't have to get all stressed out about talking or, you know, making a big grand presentation. But it's like very simple, you know, hi, I'm Jared R. Ransom, nonprofit nerd, CEO of the Raven Group. And I met Betty Smith 15 years ago when she started talking about blah, 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 blah. Help me welcome Betty Smith to the stage. So do you see what I'm saying? You're up front. You're there. You're move, you're moving the program along. You have your branding exposed and then you move off and, and the speaker gets to speak. It's really an interesting thing. It takes a little bit more management sometimes. I think it freshens up the event. I think it moves the program along and people love it. Sponsors love it. Now you might have to explain it to them if they're not doing this in your community. Um, In our community, we're seeing it a lot. I mean, we we started really seeing it before the pandemic. Um, So this is something now that sponsors are asking for. <laughs> They're saying, yeah. oh, do we have an introduction opportunity? <laughs> so, you know, you're gonna, you have to be prepared. Yeah. <laughs> and really, it doesn't cost you any more. I mean, it is it is a wonderful add-on. Yeah. Um, I coach my clients to do this as well. And it just, it makes all the sense in the world, yeah. I think. And, and it, going back to, it doesn't cost you anything, <laughs> you know, oh, it's just so. organizational. It's just organizational. You just have to get it on your script and you got to make sure that, you know, somebody's there. And I've done events where the person didn't show up. So you got to figure out, you know, who's the backup on that. But again, it's sure. an introduction. So it should, yeah. and it could be an introduction of a video. You know, if you're doing the VOG right. Voice of God video, um, right. You know, it could be that. Yeah. Get creative. Okay. Well, you know, I didn't think we would get through all of our slides, uh, <laughs> our key talking points today. We also have another question that I will ask here soon, but uh, this slide that we're showing up, Julia, are the other factors and there's seven other factors here. Walk us through them. You know, this is a, uh, today, I mean, th- in 30 minutes, um, I'm, I'm giving 30 years of, <laughs> 30 years of information. <laughs> Because I was on the other side of the table, being in media and print media, this is what came to me all day long, people wanting us to partner with them. So um, I'm kind of giving you a piece of my brain about when all these people would come to us and ask what what I was thinking, right? And how I was making decisions. Um, So this is one of the big things, defined commitment levels with specific financial levels you need, and you mentioned this when we started talking, you know, you need to have some opportunities for different levels of engagement, right? Not everybody is going to want a table. Not everybody's going to want the tickets, but they're going to want to see some value layered in there. And maybe it's really important for XYZ company to be the presenting sponsor. Maybe it's not, right? So you kind of need to figure out, 
I remember years ago um, in one of the first boards I served, I came on uh, to an organization, cultural organization, and um, they had secured a very large um, gift of support from a major gross grocery store chain. And then um, I was doing business with another grocery store chain and they said, you're on that XYZ board. And I said, yeah. And they're like, we want that presenting title. And I said, oh, well, I think it's already been sold to, you know, and they were like, well, who do we talk to about getting first right of refusal so that when they leave, we can jump in. And it was like, whoa, right. You know, I mean, to this organization, they wanted to be the presenting sponsor and they were willing to throw a lot of cash at it. Um, so you kind of have to think about these things and how it works. You will also have folks that want to make sure that they dominate that one sector so that there's only one grocery store, right? Yeah. And so you have to, you have to understand, are you willing to reduce the cash flow somewhat? in order just to protect that spot for one person? It's a big question. Next thing we talked about that tickets and tables, I, I mentioned that. I've had more and more organizations that are like, I don't wanna have to be responsible for filling a table. It's just exhausting. I wanna get up on stage. I wanna be able to make an introduction and that's a value, but I don't need a table of 10 or 12, maybe two tickets. Mm -hmm maybe four tickets. Now, if it's something really sexy, then yeah, they're going to want the tickets or you can always offer them more, you know, upon request, but there's nothing worse, Jarrett, than having your big corporate partners at a gala in the very front prime table and it's half full. Empty seats. <laughs> yeah. No seat. worse. Yeah. No worse. One thing I'm seeing here is the offer of the sponsor uh, donating them back to the charity to fill with client or participants right. uh, to attend speakers that are going to uh, speak on behalf of the agency yeah. and then also volunteer seats. So allowing, you know, two, two tickets at each table to be donated back for any of those kind of opportunities for people to attend. And I love seeing that. And, and chances are, the corporation always says, absolutely, we would love to have that. Yeah, Jared, I think you're right. And I think it's it's just um, sometimes it's a sigh of relief when that person knows they don't have to fill a table because you're not the yeah. only game in town. They're doing this full time. This is their job, right? These community yeah. partners or community managers, community engagement people, whatever you call them. Um, those philanthropic officers, they're having to figure this out every day. So it makes it hard. Another thing is yeah. that we're seeing more and more, and Jared, I'm sure you know about this, but having opportunities where volunteers um, from organizations can show up. We're seeing this a lot for check-ins, right? For an event mm -hmm. where the corporation will all be in their blue t-shirts that are branded and then they're directing everybody in and saying, welcome, come on in. And of course, you get to see their logo and they're engaged. And it's a great opportunity to build more community engagement as opposed to just that one table or, or whatever. Um, another thing that's a little bit tired and old, but still I'm amazed at the number of corporations that have swag. Um, and swag and giveaways could be everything from a box of mints with a logo on it to something that relates to their organization, right? I mean, during the pandemic and post-pandemic, um, we saw a rise in bottles of hand sanitizer, right? I mean, yes, we did. I still have some inventory. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you know what I mean? It kind of flows to whatever that looks like. But um, I think that's a that's something that if you're going to do gift bags or you're going to have something placed um, on the chairs or at the table, um, that's that's an opportunity. One of the things that I've seen, um, and this was before the pandemic, uh, which was a little bit more interesting and innovative, was um, organizations that partnered 
with like bakeries and maybe did boxed cupcakes or bags of, you know, custom cookies that were kind of used as a takeaway sweet or maybe even placed at, at a seating um, as a dessert. And again, it's branded, yes. it, it builds goodwill, but that I would call yeah. that a swag kind of thing. And then post event recap. I can't tell you the number of sponsors that are like torqued. They wrote the check, they showed up, they did everything they were supposed to, and then crickets. They never heard what happened. They never got a recap. They never learned about what the next thing was going on. No communication of impact. Wah, wah, bad form. Don't be the organization that does this because you won't develop a relationship. You know, who will no. come back with you? No, and, and in nine months, they send an invite to the same people right that weren't thanked they weren't steward they weren't I hear this all the time um I've been doing what I call my like 948 email which if the event ends at 9 30 at 9 48 there's an email already planned scheduled um and it's it's in their inboxes right <laughs> so it's like let's just get ahead of this and tell them Thank you for attending this event, either the morning, lunch, evening, you know, whatever time of day, but having that touch, uh, touch point, I think is so critical. Absolutely. It's really true. Okay, what about, Go ahead. What about the, um, you have here is the final of the other factors, quantified outreach mm -hmm. and impact numbers. Mm -hmm. I feel that tags into the post event recap. Am I right? It does, but I think it goes a little bit deeper. It's like, it's that e-blast that is sent, you know, pre-done and sent as guests are leaving. Mm -hmm. It's the communication, the post coverage that goes to media with the images that were taken. If you have a step and repeat, wh where did those images go? How were they posted? What media did they go to? But more importantly, where did you place it? Because in new media, you have that opportunity to control that, right? If you send, you know, post images to a society publication, they might may, may not publish that, but you can publish that. And that's what's yeah. critically important. So to go back, and I know we're getting ready to finish up, but let's say you have somebody from one of your corporate sponsors making an introduction from the podium. You want to make sure that pictures of that person are right. included in this, right? So, I mean, nice. you can see it's a wheel. It It's always running. It's always, you know, yeah. things are going on. It's not one thing. It's more than the event. There's a lot before and there's a lot after, but it's a wheel. And I want you to start thinking of it in that yeah. way and you'll be more successful. Well, great tips. Uh, really good information here. Before we wrap up the two of us, here, I want to ask this question from oh, yeah. the anonymous attendee. Have you seen nonprofits thanking their special event sponsors on their annual report or their impact report beyond those individual givers? Absolutely. And you should, because think about it. That's a, yeah. that's a strong dollar. And it ties back to what we were saying earlier about building um, community and demonstrating what went on, right? I mean, like you want to be able to say we had this event and it was underwritten or supported, whatever words you choose, by these organizations. It's a great opportunity to express your gratitude, to show largesse, and also to say we have these heavy hitters. You know, the yeah. this utility company believed in us. They believe in our mission, right? And so I think you need to champion that. And and who doesn't love that, right? Yeah, it's it's again, it's it doesn't cost you any more money. Um, so mm -hmm. I highly recommend it. Well, Julia C. Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy, thank you for sharing your 30 yeah. years of wisdom in 30 minutes. You knocked it out of the park. <laughs> and I'm Jarrett Ransom, nonprofit nerd, CEO of the Raven Group. Together, we want to say thank you to these amazing partners. Shout out of gratitude to our friends over at Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraising Academy at National University, 180 Management Group, Your Part-Time Controller, Staffing Boutique, JMT Consulting, 
nonprofit nerd, as well as nonprofit tech talk. These are the companies that keep us going and growing this uh, week. I almost said month, this month, but this week in particular, we uh, broadcasted our thousandth episode. So thank you to all, every single one of you for being part of this amazing journey. And Julia, thank you for being in the hot seat today. You know, as we wrap up every day, we use the same mantra and we want to encourage you to stay well so you can do well. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Thank you, Julia.